So you're thinking about making a move to the Seattle metropolitan area and Redmond, Washington is on your list of places you're thinking about? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna go over some of the most popular Redmond neighborhoods. So stay tuned. If this is your first time watching a video, feel free to subscribe to the channel here so you don't miss out on all future videos that I release on what it's like to live here in Seattle and what to expect when you're moving over to this Seattle metropolitan area. People just like yourself reach out to me here from YouTube all the time asking for help on their move over here, specifically if you're buying a home in this area and need some help making that transition from wherever you're coming from, moving over here to Seattle Metro, I'm more than happy to help out and make that transition a little bit easier for you. So feel free to reach out to me here at my info on the screen. My name is Bryce. I am a local real estate agent over here in this area. But like I said, on this video, I wanna talk about Redmond, Washington specifically. Redmond is, you know, one of the most popular locations that people are moving to from out of state. Uh, many different reasons for that, which I'll jump into here on this video, but a brief overview, availability of jobs, great schools, great clean neighborhoods, access to recreation, uh, and access to shopping and restaurants and all that kind of stuff. So it's got a, a good balance of different offerings within the Redmond area that make it a very, very desirable place for people to be moving to. Now, the reason the Redmond area has grown so much over the last five, 10, 15, 20, 25 years is because of Microsoft mainly. I mean, there are other tech companies in this area as well, but Microsoft is the big giant in this area. This is where Microsoft headquarters are. So there's a lot of people that have come here from out of state, uh, moving into the Redmond area, taking jobs at Microsoft. So of course it's brought a lot of money into this area and made it one of the most expensive places to live in all of Washington state. So, um, you know, you could see why you know, along with Microsoft, you've got Nintendo headquarters are here and other close uh, tech companies that are close by. SpaceX has some offices here. So uh, Facebook's gonna have some offices here as well. So there's a lot being offered when it comes to the job market here in Redmond, which has really exploded the growth of Redmond and the entire east side. But like I said, I wanna talk about some of the neighborhoods here so you can get a good feel for what it's like to live in Redmond and different sections within the city of Redmond to maybe help make your decision a little bit easier if you're set on uh, Redmond and you're just trying to figure out what the right neighborhood is for you. All right, so I'm gonna start off with the easiest one, the most simple one. This is downtown Redmond. So. This is something, if you're looking for some a location that's gonna be walkable, where you can walk to restaurants, go get a drink at a bar, uh, you know, go get some ice cream. Uh, you can go to Redmond Town Center. So Redmond Town Center here in downtown Redmond is like a, a kind of like an outdoor mall. It's not the biggest mall in the world with the most shops and availability, but there are uh, some options here in the Redmond Town Center uh, area, along with, like I said, all the restaurants and stuff close by. So downtown Redmond is gonna be your super urban area that is very walkable. Now it's not like Bellevue. If you're familiar with the area, you've researched Bellevue. Bellevue is like a, a very, very large urban area right next to Redmond, the city over to the west. Um, Bellevue is a very, very large city. So this urban area, this downtown Redmond area is nothing like the downtown Bellevue area. It's a much smaller scaled down version of that. So not as many bars and, and nightlife seen here in Redmond. Redmond is a, a much quieter, much calmer, slower paced downtown area. You're not gonna have bars and people out, you know, till 1, 2 a.m. drinking and then stumbling down the street. That's that's not really what you're gonna see here in Redmond. Most of the stuff will close earlier on, uh, so it's a much slower pace uh, area to live, but there are some great places to eat, and like I said, it is very walkable. Now, if you're looking to live here in Redmond, downtown Redmond specifically, you're mostly, you're gonna be looking at condos. Downtown Redmond, there's not really many single family uh, residential homes. Now, of course, there's plenty close by in the surrounding neighborhoods, but if we're talking about just the downtown Redmond neighborhood specifically, and that's where you wanna live because you want walkability, you don't have a car, something like that, you're gonna be looking at condos. So the median condo price in downtown Redmond right now is about 368,000. And that actually surprises some people because when you compare it to the median home prices that are getting close to $2 million uh, now overall in Redmond for single family homes. When you compare that, it actually sounds pretty cheap. So 
there are some options. There are a lot of one bedroom uh, condos here in Redmond that you can get for 350 to 400,000. Um, and then there are some larger options, two, three bedroom options as well. You find a lot of newer buildings here uh, that have built, been built within the last 10 to 20 years in the downtown Redmond area when it comes to condo buildings and whatnot. So some great options and availability there if that's what you're looking for. Now, along with the dining and shopping, like I mentioned in downtown Redmond, they also have a really nice farmer's market uh, in the peak season, in the, in the warmer months of the year. They also have a festival during the summer called Derby Days with races and contests and prizes and things like that, which draws a lot of people in. So Redmond is a really cool area, especially on like a nice, uh, summer day or a nice spring day uh, the sun is out you're walking around like I said going to some stores uh, checking out the farmers market uh, hitting a restaurant getting a drink getting some ice cream something like that there's a little park in the main downtown Edmonds area as well the kids can go run around uh, so it's a really really pleasant area to spend a nice uh, you know warm summer day at the last point here in downtown Redmond is the light rail so the light rails are a train system that currently just runs along the I-5 corridor this is the west side of Seattle Metro. This is through Seattle and the cities surrounding north and south on that I-5 corridor. So the light rail is our train system that runs through here and you know provides easier access for people to get to and from locations, especially if you don't have a car and you're somebody that's looking for walkability and public transportation. So like I said, right now that light rail is just on the west side. However, it is coming to Redmond and it's going to be the downtown station is going to should be ready uh, in 2024. So that's gonna provide, just open up a wide, uh, really a huge opportunity for people that wanna live in Redmond, but maybe they're working in Seattle. They're working on the west side somewhere, um, but they wanna live in Redmond. They want that walkability. They, they wanna take public transportation. They don't have a car. As of right now, if you live in downtown Redmond and you don't have a car, um, it's gonna be tough to get over to Seattle in an efficient way using public transportation. You can use a bus, but that's gonna take you forever. So that light rail is coming in 2024, and it's gonna really streamline that public transportation from the east side, Redmond specifically in this case, over to Seattle. So that's gonna open up a wide range of possibilities for people that are working in downtown Seattle that can now live in Redmond when they rely on public transportation. So that's a huge bonus that'll be coming to the area in 2024. All right, so the next neighborhood that I wanna talk about here in Redmond is just north of downtown, and this is called Education Hill. So Education Hill is about a mile, mile and a half north of downtown, and by its name, it's on a hill. Now the reason it's called Education Hill is because of all the schools in this uh, little neighborhood here. So you've got uh, Redmond High School, Redmond Junior High, and then you have two elementary schools all very close to each other here in Education Hill. So of course, along with this, when you're driving through Education Hill, you'll be in a lot of school zone, uh, uh, you know, 20 mile per hour zones when you're driving through. So make sure to be careful there. They will get you over here for going, you know, 25, 26, 27 miles an hour in these 20 mile an hour zones. So be careful there, There's a lot of school zones up here. Um, but that is why it's called Education Hill. Now, if you've done your research on Redmond, you probably know that it has one of the top school districts in the entire state. Really, the whole east side here does. Uh, this is Lake Washington School District, but very highly rated school district. So that is one reason why a lot of people end up moving to the Redmond area. Now, Education Hill is one of the older neighborhoods within uh, the Redmond area. So you're going to see a lot of 60s and 70s and 80s homes. You'll see a lot of these uh, Rambler style homes, which Rambler over here uh, is another term for a ranch style or single level. You'll see a lot of these Rambler style homes built in the 60s and 70s here. Uh, you'll see plenty of other, you know, two-story homes as well, some multi-level homes that are built in the 70s and 80s and 90s. But this is going to be, like I said, one of the older neighborhoods in the Redmond, uh, in the city of Redmond. Now, Education Hill is a beautiful area because it's on a hill, like I said, so it's overlooking the Sammamish Valley. It's overlooking the Cascade Mountains as well. So you've got some good views in some areas. There's a lot of parks around here. Across from the high school, you've got uh, the Redmond uh, swimming pool, the indoor swimming pool. So if you want to put your kids in swimming lessons or anything like that, that's super close. You can just walk from the high school or, or really one of the other schools are, are really close as well. Uh, so it's easy to get to, uh, nice and close by. So one of the big draws here in Education Hill is Hartman Park. So this gets really busy specifically on the weekends with all the kids' sports activities and whatnot. So you got baseball and basketball and soccer 
uh, fields here. You've got a picnic area as well. So if you want to take out, you know, the blanket blanket in the picnic basket and sit on the lawn and, and have a nice picnic or use a picnic table as well. You've got a playground and tennis courts and trails. So if you want, want to go walking around the trails, maybe you, you don't have kids, so you're not going to be using the park. Uh, for the other stuff maybe uh, but if you like walking on trails and whatnot that's all available here so the education hill area is a very very friendly area the neighbors you know like to keep a very community aspect a community feel to the area so the median home price here in education hill currently is about 1.6 million dollars now like i said there's a lot of older homes as well so you can find some options cheaper than 1.6 million but that is going to be your median price right now all right neighborhood number three that i want to talk about here is just south of down downtown Redmond, so going the other way, this is called the Overlake area. So Overlake bleeds into Bellevue, um, so a larger portion of Overlake, uh, the Overlake area is really considered Bellevue, but a portion of it of, as well is considered Redmond. So Overlake is famous for Microsoft. This is where Microsoft headquarters are, which is Redmond. Um, as well as Nintendo is here. Some other companies are in the area, uh, but that is what's really uh, made the Overlake area pretty popular. So right now in Overlake, they are developing an urban center. So if this is gonna be, you know, like I said, downtown Redmond is pretty urban, but now here south, there is gonna be an urban center that they are currently developing. So if you drive through there, you can see a bunch of construction going on right now. But there's going to be a lot of uh, housing options here. So, you know, condos and apartments, things like that. There's going to be a lot of retail shops and restaurants here. There should be some, I, I imagine there will be some places to go get drinks, maybe a couple bars or something like that. Um, it's early on in development, so no knowing exactly what's going to be in there yet as they're still doing construction. But there are going to be a lot of options for retail and whatnot here in this area. So this is going to become another very, very walkable area within uh, Redmond. So not super walkable right now, unless you're working uh, at Microsoft and you're living in one of the surrounding condo complexes. There are some condo complexes, you know, all around the Microsoft campus there. So unless you're living there, it's not super, super walkable at this moment, but it will become very walkable with everything that they're putting here in this urban center. Along with the urban center, I mentioned the light rail going into downtown, and it is also coming here to Overlake. So it's gonna actually be here in Overlake before downtown, just the path that it's taken, going from the south side up north. So as Overlake here is south of downtown, the light rail is going to be coming here. It's supposed to be here in 2023. So again, that's going to provide access for those taking public transportation, a much easier access over to the west side in Seattle. So that's going to draw a lot of people in. This is going to really grow this Overlake area because it is going to become so walkable and so you know public transportation friendly for those that don't own vehicles and don't want to drive. Overlake ha does have some uh, single family homes as well, some residential homes in the Overlake neighborhood. Again, these are going to be some older homes. There's going to be a lot of 60s, 70s, and 80s homes in this area. Um, like I mentioned, there is so, some condo complexes specifically pretty close to uh, the Microsoft campus as well, some apartment complexes and whatnot. Um, so you get a wide mix of what's available currently here in the Overlake area. Right now, the median home price in Overlake is $1.47 million. This is for residential homes. This is not factoring in condos, but for residential homes, it's $1.47 million. So one of the other really, really popular spots, uh, places within the Overlake area on the outskirts of Overlake is called Marymore Park. So Marymore Park is the largest park in King County. It's 640 acres. So it's a great place to go visit, especially on a nice summer day. There's a lot of sports events here. So whether that's baseball games or soccer games, they do a lot of events here. So I know Cirque du Soleil was just here. They do like movies in the park where they put out the projector screen and you can lay a blanket down or grab out the lawn chairs and have a, a movie in the park during the summer. There's an off-leash dog park, dog trail. Uh, it kind of goes in a loop and it there's little spots where the dogs can jump in the river there. So if they want to go swimming and chase the tennis ball, super dog friendly area. So Marymore Park is a really, really cool spot here in Redmond um, that if you have dogs, kids, or even you just want to walk around trails and whatnot, uh, play tennis, anything like that, uh, take in the, the local events, uh, you're likely going to be visiting Marymore Park at some point. All right, so the last neighborhood I want to go over here is the furthest east. So we're going to jump out east here, and this is going to be called Redmond Ridge. So 
Redmond Ridge is over a thousand acres uh, of property. Now, more than half of this has been preserved as forest land and will not be developed. So between the forest land and parks, this is gonna be a very green area, a uh, very protected area. So it's not gonna be super urban like these other areas that I talked about. Um, there's plenty of people that live up here. Uh, it's a little bit newer of an area compared to the west side of downtown. So most of the homes you're gonna see here in Redmond Ridge are gonna be newer homes, you know, built 2000 plus, so 2000, 2010, uh, some newer construction as well. A lot of homes like that, you'll find a lot of homes on smaller lots. So if you're somebody that, that wants a newer home with, you know, three, four bedrooms and 2000 to 3000 square feet, but you don't want a huge yard, a huge lot, uh, you can definitely find that here in Redmond, Redmond Ridge. There is plenty of that. There's a school up here as well. SpaceX offices uh, are up here as well. There's some commercial buildings and whatnot. But like I said, the common theme with Redmond Ridge is the forest land, forest area, and the park. So it's a very beautiful and green area to be along with the trails. So if you like going for a walk, whether that's you know by yourself, with your dog, with your kids, going rollerblading, riding your bike, it's a really, really nice area to be able to do that. It's definitely gonna feel a lot more slower paced out here in Redmond Ridge than the west side of Redmond. All right, well, this wraps up my neighborhood tour on Redmond, what it might be like to live here and some different neighborhoods to consider. Like I said, if you're planning to move over this way and you've got more questions, you need some help on making that move over here, feel free to reach out to me here at my info on the screen. Be more than happy, happy to help that make that transition a little bit easier on you. But I appreciate you watching this video. Feel free to check out either one of these videos right up here for some more content on what it's like living over here in the Seattle metro area.